Hi, my friends. Are you ready for my new video series? I have three videos for you, and it's all about my tablescaping competition at Orange County Fair in Southern California. I can't wait. Hi, I'm Bonnie Overman. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope my channel will inspire you to lead a more productive, creative, and stylish life at any age, always on a budget. You know, I'm 72 and I just say it because if I can do it, you can do it too at any age. Please, I beg of you, go for your passions. Do the things you want to do. Learn what you need to learn. Now is the time. Um, I want to thank all my subscribers, all my dear friends that watch my videos, that take the time to comment. I so appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. You don't want to miss any of these videos with a different theme every month. And we're coming into the best part of the year. Fall, Halloween, Christmas, my very favorite, favorite time. And if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. It does help my channel. Okay, this is video one. I'm doing th three videos total on the um, Orange County Fair tablescaping competition and specifically about my table. Now, I do this every year because I do Orange County and LA. And you want, if you want to go back and see the past years, they're all up on my channel. All you have to do is when you're watching this video, just tap on the little circle that has my picture in it. That'll take you to my page, hit videos, and there's all my videos I've ever done for the past three years. So you can watch Halloween, Christmas, you can watch whatever you want. But Okay, I'm going to show you what I've made and what my plans are to put on the table, what dishes, what, what um, accessories, what flowers I'm going to use in, at the end of this video. So don't, don't click off yet. You've got to see everything I'm going to show you, but I want to go through and tell you a little bit about this table. Okay, back in February, it was February or March, I forget, probably February. Um, they posted all the, the themes for the table because Orange County has five themes, usually four to five themes every year. And so I saw the themes, I picked one of the categories and I immediately knew what I wanted to do on this table. But the problem was, see, when I go to do a table, I picture it in my head. I have all the colors, I have the flowers, I have everything pictured in my head. Then I have to go to try to make it. This is one of the first times when I actually started to put the table together. It didn't look good. The colors were not right. I'll get into that in a minute. Let me tell you what the themes are for the Orange County Fair. Night at the Museum. Now that's an interesting one and I could have done one on that. Groovy 70s, which is not anything I want to do. Paint the town red. Now that's kind of interesting. I could have done something with that. And the other one was the fair theme, which is always a good time. And the one I wanted right away was Twisted Wonderland. Okay. You know I love Alice in Wonderland. You know I like to put a little spooky edge on things. You know, when I was a little girl and I read Alice in Wonderland, it kind of scared me. I mean, let's face it, Alice in Wonderland, Alice is very sweet and innocent with their little kitty, but Wonderland, they got some very strange people. <laughs> it's very weird, but I thought how fun to put a twist on that, right? So I decided to go with Twisted Wonderland and very specifically, I'm taking it just very literal. Twisted Wonderland. Okay, now I knew right away what I wanted to do. I said, Twister Wonderland, I'm gonna do Alice's Ghoulish Garden. And that is what my theme is for Twisted Wonderland. Okay, here was my thought process behind it. So we have Mad Hatter, you know, and this is kind of taking from the Tim Burton movie in 2008, which I really didn't like that. They, could, they just weren't creative enough with it. I didn't think anyway. But here Alice is gone, she's a ship captain, and Mad Hatter really wants Alice to come back more often and visit, because they all love her, and she always helps out with everything. They can't seem to handle life, you know? So, anyway, he thought, let's have Alice plant a garden in Wonderland, and that'll bring her back. Maybe she'll have some parties in her garden and things like that. So Alice loved the idea, so she decided to plant a garden in Wonderland thinking beautiful roses and beautiful um, hydrangea and all these beautiful plants are going to grow and it didn't work out that way because there's something in Wonderland while it's magical it's a little bit twisted and a little bit ghoulish maybe 
Okay, so you get my drift on this, but I didn't wanna make it Halloween. So I'm gonna show you in just a minute the colors and everything. So when I started out with this table, I knew I wanted black velvet tablecloth, black and white check runner to get bring out the black and white check because I want hits of Wonderland on this table. I knew I'd make all my ghoulish flowers. I, I already made them, pre-made them, a whole bunch of them with eyeballs, with teeth, uh, all in pinks and reds and black um, leaves and things like that. And when I put it all together, the pink didn't look right. And I wanted that so bad. I love pink and red together. And I thought what a great thing to put with black and white check is pink and red. So that started me on my own ghoulish nightmare. I have to tell you, this table is giving me more fits than any other table I did. So I thought, okay, I made some things gray on the table and black, should I go more into purples and blues? To kind of match the backdrop, which you're not gonna see till the next video. And I thought, no, Alice has got blue in her dress. And by the way, she's gonna be on the table. And I thought I'm doing black and white check plates. I'm doing a lot of black and white. So I took out the pink and left the red. And then I added back, because there's a lot of gray on the table too, some gray roses and really faded purpley gray flowers. And by the way, the next video, you're gonna see my basic table set up, my finished table set up, and then the third video, I'm going to the fair and filming everything. So this is the first one, and I think it's really important because if you wanna put together anything, I think maybe some of my thought processes or what I look at or what I do might help you do the same thing. At least when you get stuck. We all get stuck. And I don't want anybody to think that, oh, I have it so easy, you know, I just throw the stuff on the table and it's perfect. It's not. This whole process is such a joy, creating these tables, and such hell. <laughs> There's so many choices. I have a good friend that, you know, we go back and forth on, on this table thing. And, you know, he's asking me, well, should I use this placemat and this napkin or this placemat and this napkin or the first placemat and this? We drive ourselves so crazy because we can't go to the fair and put up a table that we're not totally in love with. All right, I've talked enough about this, but I want now to show you what I actually uh, have put together for this table. And uh, it might change the next video. I don't know, you might see something a little different, but this is where I stand right now. And uh, I hope you love it. I hope you get so inspired. I hope you'll watch all three videos and really enjoy them. So I'm gonna see you in the next video with my table. Bye. Welcome to my first video for my tablescape at Orange County Fair. This is my concept video. Okay, first of all, I'm, <laughs> you see I have Alice here. Now Alice is not properly cut out. She has to, and that's again, the hand of somebody else. She's got three arms here, but there's a reason why I had that in the back of it. Anyway, I need to fine, finally cut her out and adhere her to something that will make her stand up on the table. I'm also gonna be including the white rabbit, the Cheshire Cat, and Tweedledum and Tweedledee. But my whole concept when I pictured Alice's garden, of course, this is all during Victorian times. I pictured two uh, uh, pillars with urns on them and then a uh, brick-covered entryway into the garden. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show you these pillars that I made, which I'm pretty happy with here. Now, I want to show you what this is. I'm going to take all the stuff off of here. So, you know, on my um, Mardi Gras table, I used faux brick. I used this stuff, okay? This comes in sheets of, I think it's 15 by 15. It's adhesive. It's three-dimensional. In other words, it's it's got actual dimension to it. And I had a lot left over, and I said, you know, I want Alice's... Uh, garden wall and pillars to be out of brick, but I want them gray because that's more spooky. So look what I did. I painted it. So here's my my pillar that I made and what it is behind the scenes, and you'll see this in my next video too, it's a crate from Walmart. It's a crate that you put stuff in. And what I did is I just took that brick and covered it around both sides and pieced it. 
You can see it's completely covered. The back is open because I needed something. I'll show you right back here. See how it's a crate? I needed something I could clamp it onto the table with because I don't want it falling off the table. Now, to make this look finished on the top, I knew I needed some type of a, like a block or something on the top, and I wanna show you what this is. My cat's prescription cat food came in here. You can see there's the circles from the cans. And I had two of these and I kept looking at them and looking at them and I thought, you know, that's gonna fit. Well, it was just a little bit too small, but I was able to um, like extend it slightly and look, it just fits perfectly on top. It looks like a cement brick on there. And I just, I just think it looks so, so good. Now I had these big urns in the garage. I just wanna show you here, these fabulous urns. These are gonna go on top of the pillars on either side. And um, this is not a finished arrangement, by the way, but I just want to show you kind of what I decided to do with the colors instead of pink. I picked out very pale uh, purple, some of these purpley gray flowers, red roses. Now my uh, flowers that I'm, and then I have Halloween spooky branches. And then I have this amaranthus in black hanging down. And I just had a touch of green. This was in a garland from Hobby Lobby. And I just want to show you that. Another thing I did is I took ivy and different types of stems. These were green, painted them black, and then I dabbed on gray. And look, it looks like it's all mildewy. Perfect for a twisted Wonderland, I think anyway. All right, I wanna show you now too, I have some spooky flowers. Now these are so easy to make and I'm gonna show you how to make them in an upcoming craft video. You basically need this um, twine covered wire. Cause you can, look at, I can bend these. I can bend them to uh, go any direction I wanna bend them in, okay? That's, what the, that's why this is so great. And what I did on the back is I started with um, these eyeballs and these are from Dollar Tree and I just painted them black around here in a pink iris. And then what you do is you coil this up and again, I'm gonna show you in an upcoming video. And um, I first I did one flower on here. I did a red flower, then I did a green flower on this one. This was, it used to be a different color scheme, I have to say, so. And then I coiled up this uh, wired twine, coiled it up and glued it on. And then I glued on this black uh, series of leaves on it. And you have your ghoulish flowers. My next thing I did is I took, this is from an egg carton. And these are my biting tulips. <laughs> So I cut apart an egg carton and then made, cut out, you can see inside here, I did four pieces. So you can see there's two on the side, see there? And one on the top and one on the bottom. I cut out white pieces of foam for the teeth. That's foam. You can also use fork tines from plastic white forks. And what I did is I painted it and I did put a little ball in the back because it looked like an egg carton. And so I put on uh, the same situation here. So first I glued on red, then I glued on pink, then I uh, glued on this, there's the coil thing right there. So you can see, I can bend this to go forward, I can bend it to go up, I can bend it any way I want because it's got this metal in here. To did a, co a coil of the, um, this this uh, wire, the twine covered wire, a coil right here, then I cut um, a black leaf and just put it on there to hide it. And you can make your own flowers. And then I had a whole bunch of regular unpainted uh, mushrooms. I'm working on some other ones now. I'll let you know if I use them or not. And I did, these were all in beige. I did a pink underneath, I did black, and then a brush of gray. I did red on the top with um, white polka dots. And you do that with either the eraser on the top of a pencil, which makes a round, or you can use the tip of a paintbrush. There's all kinds of things you can use. All right, so you can see here that I have uh, kind of a ghoulish look to everything. And I wanted to share with you my table setting. So um, I have a black and white check runner on the table and I decided to go with silver. I didn't want to make this 
too goldy looking. I just, gold didn't quite go with it. So I like the grays and the silvers. So I have these cheap plastic chargers and then I have my black and white check plates and then I have these um, kind of gardeny looking black and white plates and I'm gonna be using, making a um, napkin ring for that. Anyway, I hope you love this and got so many ideas and I haven't even shown you hardly any of this. Wait till you see the finished table. In the next video, don't forget to watch. I'm going to show you my finished table and how I made it all. All right. I hope you love this. I hope you got so inspired, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.